colleague. When we set out together, you named us as fun pioneers, and what a half-century of fun it's been. I like to think that what you have achieved has kept the music radio world on firmer ground than might otherwise have been the case. Whichever part of that world we inhabit, Tony, I know we're all in your debt. Thank you for everything you've given us, and for all that I believe you still have to give. Thank you. Well, it's lovely coming from somebody like Tim Blackmore, who um, has been with me all all this time, actually, yeah. you know. And, um, you know, terrific. And uh, we, we did have fun together in those early days. And we were trying to... I always said to Tim, we're trying to break the fun barrier. And that's what we, we were attempting to do. And, uh, you know, make the audience break out in fun bumps. Has that been the, the mission for the last 60 years? Um, yes, yeah, trying to make people uh, laugh, and one day it might happen. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? I'll keep trying. <laughs> Tony, it's been a joy. Um, we can all feel the love and appreciation towards your professionalism, your sense of humour, and, as Tim said there, your kindness as a gentleman of the airwaves. Well, thanks to you all for great memories and music and to all of our contributors who are delighted to be asked. Thanks to producer Mark Simpson, and most importantly, thanks to you, Tony Blackburn. Thank you so much. Uh, it's been a pleasure being here and particularly having you doing the programme with me, Dermot, because uh, I'm a great admirer of yours as well. And on your 80th birthday, I would like to do your programme. <laughs> you consider yourself booked. <laughs> this is Radio 2 on the BBC Sounds Up, your smart speaker, and 88 to 91 FM. BBC News at 10 o'clock. This is Harvey Cook. Rishi Sunak is still facing questions about how much he knew of Nadim Zahawi's tax affairs after the Prime Minister sacked him as Conservative Party chair. An inquiry found Mr Zahawi had repeatedly broken rules on how government ministers should behave by failing to disclose an HMRC investigation into his taxes. Here's our political correspondent Rob Watson. Rishi Sunak may have sacked Nadim Zahawi, but he hasn't silenced his own critics. While the Prime Minister's supporters have defended his decision to have an investigation before firing Mr Zahawi, opposition parties have described his behaviour as weak and the government as being mired in sleaze. Even some Conservatives are privately questioning whether Mr Sunak has both the ruthlessness and judgement needed to be a good leader. The Housing Secretary Michael Gove has admitted government failures were partly to blame for the Grenfell Tower fire, which killed 72 people in 2017. Tomorrow, he'll announce a six-week deadline for developers to sign a contract to fix towers covered in unsafe cladding or be banned from the market. Steve Day is a resident at Royal Artillery Quays in London, one of the thousands of blocks affected. He's campaigned to get it fixed for years. Well, we welcome the announcement that builders will be legally liable to pay to fix dangerous defects on buildings. However, we are concerned in the detail of these contracts. There are currently um, leaseholders in buildings at below six storeys and enfranchised leaseholders excluded. The Scottish Government has paused the movement of transgender prisoners with a history of violence towards women to all-female jails. That's while the prison service completes a review of its transgender policy. Ryanair and EasyJet say staff who'd lost their jobs due to the collapse of the airline Flybe should apply for roles with them. Flybe went into administration yesterday, putting 277 staff out of work. EasyJet has 250 vacancies for cabin crew, while Ryanair is looking for pilots, engineers and ground staff. Hundreds of puzzle fans have descended on Glasgow this weekend to race each other to complete a popular toy invented in the 1970s. That's the sound of world record holder Timon Kolanski completing a Rubik's Cube in just under six seconds. The Polish so-called Speed Cuber out-twisted the competition to win the 3 by 3 event. He explains how he got into the unusual sport. We always had a Rubik's Cube lying somewhere around the house. So at one point I was like, well, it would be cool to solve one. So I looked up how to do it on the internet. And uh, when I did, I also came across competitions. And basically ever since then, I've just been cubing like all day, every day. And football in the FA Cup, Wrexham and Sheffield United drew three all after a stoppage time goal. And that's the BBC News at three minutes past ten. Now, BBC Radio 2 unwinds.